Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for visiting. If you don't know me, my name is Angela and I find my paradise in reading. I wanted to take a quick break today and talk about a book that I finished just a couple days ago. And I, I, I don't even know how to get this off my chest. Like I don't, oh my gosh, let me start off. I just finished The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Mars. I, uh, oh my God, look at this. I got this as a gift um, last year for Christmas. It was on my wish list and I, I took my time reading this. Now I can read many books and in a month and I can read pretty quickly. This one, I just, really took my time with. Um, I started it in the beginning of the month and I just finished it a couple days ago. Um, and it's not even like, what is this? Like 455 pages. But I don't even know how to say this. Guys, this book was incredible. This book was everything. This, the writing, this was just, it blew me out of the water. This was nothing, nothing that I had expected. This threw me in. I was like, oh, this, when I saw it, I said, oh, this looks interesting. I'd never read Walter Morris, um, any of his works. Um, I have another book that I also got for Christmas that I thought looked interesting. It was the 13 and a Half Lives of Captain Bluebeard. And it says, you know, the same author of 13 and a Half Lives of Captain Bluebeard. So I have that book also. Um, never heard of them. This was just me browsing in a bookstore and taking pictures of all the books that I wanted. But what can I say about this book? I swear, has anyone read this? Um, I think from what I heard, this is part of a series, could be part of a series. I don't know, but... Yeah, this is um, from the Zamonia series. I think this can be read as a standalone. I heard this is like the third book of that series, but I didn't know it was part of a series. Um, I read this by itself and I had no background on this and it was excellent. I thought it was a standalone, honestly. This book was so good. Oh my God, and for days, like, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I didn't even want to read anything else for a while because I just wanted it to sink in. Um, so this is, and I don't even know how to, it's, you know, when you, when a book is so good and you like it so much, you can't even really talk about it. Like you can't put into words what you want to say, especially without spoilers. Um, but it kind of looks like, oh, it could be for kids, right? And it's got illustrations all throughout this book. And looking at the illustrations, one could think that, oh, like maybe this is not, um, I, don't know. I mean, look at these illustrations. Does this look like a book for adults? <laughs> Does it? it just looks like, I thought it looked fun and cute. And holy Hannah, did this thing throw me in for such a surprise. There was so much adventure. Basically, this book is about Optimus Yarn Spinner here. And he is, looks like a dinosaur. And he is from Lindworm Castle, which is like here. And he is basically there the people from Lindworm Castle are known to be writers and they kind of are raised in all things bookish. They are very literary kind of scholars. They know about all kinds of works. They study it all their lives and they live hundreds of years. They have an authorian godfather who kind of mentors them into all things bookish and stuff. And so they mentor them through that and Holy hell. 
Okay, so, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted. Um, yeah, basically, we have this guy, and he, his authorial grandfather on his deathbed um, shows him an, a manuscript, um, the greatest piece of work he's ever read. He doesn't know who the author is. And so um, Optimus goes to Book Home. It's a city that is all book all book all things bookish authors writers publishers bookstores um things like that so he's on a quest to find who this author is because he reads this manuscript and it's the best thing he's ever written and he's or read and he's just obsessed and he's like i have to find who this guy is and what, what happened with him um so it this book is all adventure it is adventure it is well written it is there's humor it's twists and turns. It is so fun. It is so fun, so interesting. The ideas are so unique. And you're like, where did this author get these ideas? Like, how did he come up with this stuff? So I am going to share a couple of items that I have um, marked, okay? Um, just to give you an idea of what the writing style is like and how interesting. And in, there's so many pieces that are so insightful and deep it's it, this was entertaining well written it had a lot to do with writing and books and literature and it was just fantastic fantastic oh my god this is such a fantastic book so all right i'm gonna share okay so here we go here's one it says there was even something comforting about this world of the dead because the absence of life betokened the absence of danger all that is evil stems from the living the dead are a peaceable bunch Literature is more than just paper, you know. It affects every aspect of existence. It pervades life far more thoroughly than people tend to realize. We also call this place the Chamber of Marvels, not because there are any marvels to be seen here, but because we can't stop marveling at all the stuff we've amassed. He chuckled. They sought my company because they regarded me as a genuine author or even as something far more interesting, an author in the making. Being acquainted with pl plenty of accomplished writers, they saw in me an opportunity to help it mold an artist's character and exert a personal influence on his development. So here are some of the words of advice that he accumulated from these booklings. Never write a novel from the perspective of a door handle. Foreign words are foreign to most readers. Never put more words in a sentence than, genuine, than genuinely belong in it. If a full stop is a wall, a colon is a door. If you write something while drunk, read it through sober before you submit it to a publisher. Footnotes are like books on the bottom shelf. No one likes looking at them because they have to pen, bend down. If one of your sentences puts you in mind of an elephant trying to pick up a coconut with its trunk, better give it some more thought. Stealing from one author is plagiarism. From many authors, research. <laughs> big books are big because the author didn't have the time to express himself succinctly. So here's a different passage. Writing is a desperate attempt to extract some dignity and a mokium, modicum of money from solitude. I love this one. Curiosity is the most powerful incentive in the world. Why? Because it's capable of overcoming the two most powerful disincentives in the world, common sense and fear. I love that, love it. Okay, and the last one I'm gonna share with you today. Some people can write a bit better than others. They're called authors. Then there are some who can write better than authors. They're called artists. So that is all I'm going to say for this one. I highly, highly, I can't recommend this enough. I can't, this is, this is it. I mean, it was so good. And like, I bawled my eyes out, like at the end. I mean, and this, this is just going to sit with me for a very long time. So I hope this really, really inspires you to get this book because I swear to goodness gracious. You really have to get this one. Um, 
yeah, and I need to talk to other people um, who've read it because I need to connect with other people who've read it so I can talk about it because if not, I am going to find a therapist who's read it so I can talk about this. So thank you so much for joining me. And that is The City of Dreaming Books.